Hey everybody, Sinister Lex here, and today is Copy Crazy Thursday. We're gonna take a look at Dan Kennedy's Big Questions. So for those who don't know, Dan Kennedy is a world-class copywriter and marketer. He is very good. You should definitely read his books if you're thinking about being any kind of copywriter. But today we're gonna look at his big questions that are gonna help you write better copy. And they do that by tapping in to people's biggest problems and pain points seeing the world through their eyes and speaking to them how they need to be spoken to, and finally capitalizing on what other people are doing wrong or bad or that isn't working for while selling the same or similar products. So we're gonna dive right in with these. We've got 10 questions to look at, starting with those that are about problems and pain points. Number one, what keeps them up at night? What keeps your customer or prospect up at night that uh, they're thinking about? Maybe it's something in their business, maybe it's something in their life, whatever it is, how does that relate to your product? What does your product solve for this person that they think is keeping them up at night? Like the thing that they're losing sleep over. Maybe it's they have to do cold calls in the morning. Maybe they have to do sales. Maybe they have to be somewhere at a certain time and that's a problem. They can't get there because they're gonna be stuck in traffic. So think about the problems that keep them up at night and how can you show that you solve those problems? How can you show that you understand those problems? Number two, what are they afraid of? What are they afraid of in business or life? Are they afraid of doing cold calls? Are they afraid of talking to someone? Are they afraid of trying some new product? Are they afraid of putting their pants on in the morning? Whatever their fear is, you have to know it so you can tap into it and speak to it. You have to know it so you have a way to solve it. Number three, what are they angry about? Or who are they angry at? You have to look at the products and services they already use or whatever product it is that you're trying to sell. What makes them angry about a similar product? What makes them angry about the problem it solves in life? If you have to know that problem or maybe they've tried maybe you have a service business or maybe you own a business and it's similar to another business let's say you own a pizza shop and somebody else owns a pizza shop and your customer your potential customer currently went over to that pizza shop they went to your competitor and they had a bad experience so now they hate them they are angry about the experience they had so how do you capitalize on that by understanding what they are angry about with that competitor you can say hey we're not like that. We're completely different. We're the good guy, right? You have to understand what they're angry about so you can address it, show how you're different, and you're going to solve that problem. Number four, what are their top three daily frustrations? The things that relate to your product on a daily basis that aren't the main problem, they're sub-levels of that problem. They're smaller, like little ripples rippling out from that problem that whenever that problem occurs, it causes other little insignificant problems. Let's say that the problem is their shower takes forever to heat up, so that causes them to wait longer for the shower to heat up, and then the shower is cold until it heats up. Once it heats up, they finally take a shower, and then they get dressed, and they eat their breakfast, and they get out the door, and now there's ripple effects because they're stuck in traffic because they had to wait on the friggin' shower. So you need to know the top three daily frustrations they face. It's frustrating to wait on that shower, it's frustrating to wait in traffic, and it's frustrating to be late to work. How do you speak to those problems and solve them for your customer? Number five, what trends are occurring or will occur in their business and life? So things that are going to happen to them or are already happening to them are already starting to take place. I don't know, maybe it's the shift from smartphones to virtual reality. Like these are trends of things that are happening that are changing. And in business, trends happen all the time. Trends impact businesses in a big way. This year, we're seeing businesses shutting doors locally because everyone is moving digitally. They're going online. That's a big problem. So how do you speak to that problem? How do you address that problem and say, hey, everybody's going online. You're having to shut your doors. We can help you make that transition smoothly. That's going to help you speak to your customer in a way they need to be spoken to and tap into their strongest pain points. Number six, what do they secretly, ardently desire most? Now, this is a tricky one because some of us are tempted to think that they want all the good stuff in life. They want the heaven. They want to move toward riches or wealth or happiness or joy or blah, 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 blah. In reality, what people want is to move away from pain. And that's what we want to help them do. Whenever we're writing copy, we want to show them the pain that they're having. We want to agitate it a little bit. That's why we start with that big problem and then we go into the deeper aspects of what they're angry about, what what makes them angry about that problem? And then we touch on the frustrations like, and it causes this and this and this. And that's really freaking annoying for you. What do they desire? They desire to move away from that problem. They desire a solution. They desire it to be done for you. 
and that is what you have to show that you do in order to get them to desire your product. You're tapping into their emotional pain points surrounding this problem so that you can get them to desire to solve that problem through you. Okay, so let's move into part two. The part where we talk about how to speak to these people and how they see the world. There are two questions surrounding this. So number seven, is there a personal bias in the way they make decisions? This is a really important one, guys. If you're speaking to someone who's only ever owned an offline business and you're trying to sell a service that is online, you might have a little bit of difficulty transitioning with this switch. I tried to sell people a daily deal service last year in a town where everybody was offline, all local businesses all stuck in the past. And what happened? It was really difficult to make that transition and I ultimately failed. And while some people, some were early adapters, the majority of people weren't interested. They weren't that kind of people. They weren't interested in a digital playing field and therefore they didn't buy into it. Even though it was virtually free and cost them nothing, they still wouldn't adapt it. So you have to understand where they're coming from in the world so that you can speak to them how they need to be spoken to. Number eight, do they have their own language? For a while I worked with the National Guard and what you find out really fast when you join an engineering company is that they have their own slang. They talk about they talk about all these different mechanical pieces to vehicles like booms and chains and and dirt and grit and these are words that they use on a daily basis that are part of their world that forms their reality. They use all these specific languages to form their communications between one another and you as a marketer have to understand that language. You have to know how they speak. What slang do they use? How do they talk about their products and how do they come at anything that they're doing in life. What do they think about? What do they say? What are the actual words going on in their mind? If you miss this language, you are not going to hit them on an emotional level. You might tap into some of their problems, but without the right language, you sort of fall flat. So keep that one in mind. This one is very important. All right, now we move into section three, your competitors and how they're blowing it. How are you gonna capitalize on them? So number nine is who is selling a similar product to you similar service, whatever it is, and how are they blowing it right now? This travels all the way back to the anger question, so just consider that. What are they doing and how can you improve on their service? How can you write that into your copy in a way that's going to make people feel it and notice the difference? They have to notice that this is them and this is you and they have to be able to do that from your words. And then the last one, number 10, your customers who are trying to sell similar services or products how are they failing right now? What are they doing that isn't working? What are they saying in their copy? Where do you need to improve on that stuff in order to make those sales? All right, guys, so that's it. That's Dan Kennedy's 10 questions, and those are ultra important. If you wanna be a mastermind copywriter, you need to understand these questions. So if you haven't done it, go Google them. If you need to rewatch this video, do what you gotta do to get these questions solidified into your mind or just write them down somewhere so you can come back to them anytime you're about to write copy. That's all I've got for this one. Subscribe down below if you wanna see more. I'm Sinister Lex and I will see you next time.